Hi, it's Tim from OracleBase.com. In this video, we'll look at hiding badly performing processes using decoupling. Sometimes we have processes that, no matter how much we try to tune them, remain slow. As an application user, having to wait for slow calls to complete can make the user interface feel slow and unresponsive. Rather than making users wait for a process to complete, we could just queue the request and let the user continue with their day. We aren't actually improving performance, we're just shifting the problem somewhere else. A good example of this is internet banking. When you transfer some money, you don't wait at the screen until the transfer is complete. You simply make the request and move on, knowing that sometime later the money transfer will happen. Let's work through an example of decoupling. I'm going to use PLSQL and Oracle Advanced Queuing but you could solve the same problem with any programming language and message queuing system. We create a user called testuser1 and grant it the create session and create procedure privileges. We also give it access to the dbms lock package so we can use the sleep procedure. If you're using Oracle 18c or above, you can forget this and use the sleep procedure in the dbms session package. We connect to the new user and create a procedure called slow request. This procedure is going to represent our slow running process. It accepts two parameters, username and request info. Rather than doing real work, we'll just fake it by sleeping for 10 seconds. Let's call it once and time it. You won't be surprised to see it takes approximately 10 seconds to complete. If we were calling this from a user interface, that would be really annoying. To make the user experience better, we decide to decouple the process. To do this, we need some form of message queue. In this case, we'll use Oracle Advanced Queuing. We connect to a privileged user, then make sure our test user has the create type privilege, and the advanced queuing roles, AQ administrator role, and AQ user role. We also give it a direct grant so we can compile code containing calls to the DBMS AQ package. We connect to our test user and create a database type called slow request type as a queue message payload. In this case, the parameter values to call the slow request procedure. Now we have to create and start a queue using the DBMS AQ ADM package. We create a queue table called slow request queue tab with a payload based on the slow request type we just created. We create a new queue called slow request queue in the queue table. Then we can start the queue. Now we create a package called slow request API which we use in place of calling the slow request procedure directly. It contains three procedures. Enqueue puts a new message on the queue. DQ pulls a message off the queue. Process request job processes any outstanding messages on the queue. Let's take a look at the implementation of the API. The enqueue procedure accepts parameters for the values that need to be queued. There are some mandatory variables we need when interacting with the queue. Let's ignore them. We have a variable defined using the payload type, which we populate by instantiating a new object using the input parameter values. We then call the DBMS AQ and Q procedure, passing the queue name and the payload object. The DQ procedure is the reverse. We have out parameters to return the values pulled off the queue, the mandatory variables and the message payload. We set a DQ option so the call will return instantly if nothing is on the queue. We call the DBMS AQ DQ procedure passing the queue name and payload object. When the message is dequeued, we set the output variables using the return payload. The process request job procedure contains a loop. Inside the loop, we pull a message from the queue using the dequeue procedure, then use the values to call the original slow request procedure to process the data. An error is thrown if there are no messages on the queue. We trap it and exit cleanly. 
We could improve the performance of dequeuing the message by using array processing, but we'll just keep it simple here. So let's compare the original method with using the decoupling API. We use DBMS utility get time to capture the time at the start of the test. We loop five times, each time calling the slow request procedure. Once the last call is complete, we display the elapsed time in hundredths of a second. As you would expect, with five calls at 10 seconds per call, it takes about 50 seconds for the test to complete. The second test is similar, but this time we call the slow request API NQ procedure inside the loop. Rather than 50 seconds, all five calls are completed in less than a hundredth of a second. I think users are going to be really happy with that sort of response. Of course, we haven't done any work, we've just recorded the fact we need to do it later. In the final test, we time a call to the process request job procedure. As we'll see, it takes approximately 50 seconds to complete the work. While we wait, let's mention some of the rules of decoupling. We've demonstrated how decoupling can hide badly performing processes from users, improving the user experience of our applications. For this to work, the user must understand their request has been queued and the results are not instantly visible. We don't want them to be confused and keep repeating the request. As you can see, we're not improving performance, we're just moving the problem somewhere else. We should only queue requests if the effort of queuing them is less than the effort of completing the actual processing. And we would need to decide on a suitable schedule for processing the requests sometime later. And there we have it. It took about 50 seconds to complete the work. Thanks for watching. As always, there are links to articles containing lots more information about this subject in the description box below.